What's up, DCS crew and wet shaving community? It is episode seven of hashtag Darn Close Shaves here on Daily Carry Solutions. I got a little bit of uh, black, white, and red going on today. And the uh, star of this particular shave is going to be Ariana Nevins. Starting with the pre-shave, we got Slick Stick. We've got Ariana Nevins on the soap. This is their goat's milk and manteca base, which is uh, an homage to Creed Aventus. This is called Spartacus. Um, we have Thayer's Witch Hazel as the toner. I have Spartacus as the aftershave. Very, very nice fragrance smell. I can even smell it from there. And their Post Shave Serum as the balm. I'm gonna be using, um, I'm gonna be lathering it up actually with the first artisan uh, shave brush I ever picked up. This is the Serendipity from Craving Shaving. So shout out to Charles for that one. And I'm gonna be mowing down I'm gonna say four days worth of growth with my carbon razor, which surprisingly has not seen even one second of activity on hashtag darn close shave. Don't ask me why, because I've already done a complete video unboxing it and I still haven't used it, but it is gonna be put through its paces today, um, which speaking of which in the pocket, the blade is the ha uh, the Civivi Backlash, which this is an all, back, uh, all black uh, backlash, which I like to call the black lash. That's why I was getting tongue twisted there. I'll tell a little bit more about that once I start shaving. And then the Hank, which I've been using a lot post COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, you know, crises going on. This is an awesome pattern from Hero Badger Hanks, which unfortunately uh, has uh, is now defunct. They're not making Hanks, but there are a bunch of Hank makers. If you search them or if you search my friends, or need a suggestion, I can go ahead and point to them on my Instagram. Uh, they were actually on Etsy and selling on eBay. I reached out to Heather, which is the owner of that company, super nice lady. I got a couple of Hanks from her and I still use them to this day. I bought them years ago. And having a Hank, especially now during the pandemic, is great to have uh, when you're you know, just out and about doing your thing. But uh, I will get into that as well as why I love this soap. And while I love the Creed Aventus set, I will never buy the fragrance, and I'm gonna tell you why after the intro. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna let that run, and then we'll get into the shave. Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and get started with uh, Slick Stick. This is the pre-shave um, that's marketed by uh, Peter's company, Ariana and Evans. And, um, I'm gonna be honest, I've used it a couple times, and this is probably something that you could easily, in a pinch, if you have to shave really quick, you can just put this on and it's slick enough, like hence the name, uh, that you can use it for the shave and not have to worry about soap. It would probably do well just as a soap in itself and you'd have a nice shave. But <laughs> one thing, I would say is it definitely does not sit within the uh, the usual uh, Ariana and Evans scent profile. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because this smells a little bit like, uh, and Peter, I'm sorry for saying this, but it smells a little bit like fried chicken. <laughs> it does. So, um, you know, I, I, no, I, I like fried chicken, you know, and uh, <laughs> I had I had a good chuckle the first time I actually uh, put this on because it was one of those things where <laughs> I smelled it and I'm like, I had to do a double take because I was like, man, this smells, it smells like fried chicken. <laughs> and I, I mean like straight up, you go to KFC and you buy a bucket of chicken, you take a good whiff of their, you know, original recipe and shit <laughs> and you, uh, you take a whiff of this. I'm serious, it's a it's a very, very similar style scent. But as much as it smells like chicken, that's the only thing that I can poke fun at. Because the truth is, Slick Stick is probably the best pre-shave that I've used. And I've, I've used three, to be honest. I've used uh, the Pro Rosso, which is the pre and post shave, the white which is touted as one of their best ones. And I've used the tube, which is, you know, the cube from PAA, 
or Phoenix Artisan accoutrements in tube form. They have different versions. The one that I use is the non-mentholated one because I typically keep the menthol portion for the end of the shave. And at the time, I wasn't even using aftershave splashes with alcohol. I was really more of a, of a toner and balm guy. It's good stuff, though. Really, really, really good stuff. Gets your, uh, gets your stubble ready for the shave. I'm going to go ahead and wet my face a little bit for the soap. And then we get to talk a little bit about the soap. So, Spartacus. Spartacus is based on their old formula. It's the goat's milk and tallow base. Uh, they list the tallow in the notes as Manteca. And now Manteca, if you're a Latin person like me, you grew up hearing about Manteca and you probably had it in your kitchen because Manteca is an animal fat that when used to fry up stuff, oh my God, it tastes like seventh heaven. Oh, beautiful, beautiful fried foods made out of Manteca have graced my my intestine and colon and come out of my ass <laughs> great great stuff but uh, tallow is used because it's a very cheap commodity in the wet shave community that produces high amounts of stearic acid it's not the only thing that can be used there's a lot of items that produce stearic acid that are vegan based which is why phoenix artisan accoutrements uh Vegan bases, including the CK6, are touted so high because they have a very high amount of stearic acid, which is the active amount, the, the active ingredient uh, used to make this, you know, quality lather and uh, just overall pleasant shave experience. You want to look for something that's quality um, and just high in stearic acid because it will result in a fantastic lather. Now, I think the lather is good to go. And I gotta tell you, uh, off the puck, the scent is pretty light. And I'm fine with that. Um, I've found that the lighter the soap scent is, for the most part on uh, Peter's or Pete's soaps, the less likely it's going to have an issue with my skin because I've actually owned uh, Ariana and Evan's soaps, uh, two in particular, but one I most recently had in his new base and um, it just, it, it reacted with my skin. So I'm gonna start with the first pass. This is the Carbon Razor, the 316. Uh, let me see, what was it called again? Yeah, it's the, uh, the Carbon, 316L, uh, stainless uh, with a, uh, a brand new Gillette Nasset blade. So, um, oh, great soap. So I was um, initially hesitant about using his soap again, you know, because Ariane and Evans uh, you know, it didn't agree with my skin, but I found it's typically his soaps that have a, 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 a base that changes color due to its ingredients. So usually the lighter color bases, like this one from Spartacus, which is Spartacus. I have uh, London Gin Club in the Kaizen 2 base. And I have Vetiver Magnifique in the standard Kaizen base. They all have the fact that in common, they all have just the standard uh, soap look, white soap. And surprisingly, they all give me good shaves. Irritation free, no problem whatsoever. This one in particular is his older base. I love it. And this was actually my first, oh, I think I may have uh, nicked myself here in the back. Huh. Oh, in any case, 
Um, this was actually a soap that was given to me by JR. Known on Instagram as Reyes Restores. He restores old school, old school <laughs> shave brushes. You know, the Double Ducks, the Simons, the Ever Readies. And uh, he puts new knots on them. Whatever you want, you know, synthetic, badger, boar, horse, whatever the hell you want to put. I mean, really, really good, high quality stuff. And, um, you know, we got to talking one day and I actually got this in a trade from him. I got this and I got uh, Barrister Man's Soft Heart uh, in a sandalwood scent in a trade of. And I loved the scent on that and I liked the scent on this a lot because I had never tried Creed Aventus's soap. Uh, the scent in a soap. So um, that's what actually is going to segue me into talking about why I will never buy Creed Aventus. There are two reasons why. And to each their own. If you own Aventus, that's fine. And I'm going to tell you why. And part of the reason is because if you get an old bottle of Creed Aventus, and smell it uh, alongside a new bottle of Creed Aventus. The scent profile is dramatically different. And that's mainly because of the fact that the materials that were used to create the newer version were slightly different and as a result it changed the scent. Aside from that, so if I were to get Creed, it would be an older uh, bottle that I would want to look for. I'd want to look for like a used bottle, which is going to be very hard to find because that's usually <laughs> the most desired. That's like, if I'm going to look for a July Fat Boy, I'm going to look for the 1959 Fat Boy, which is the Fat Boy to buy, you know. Um, but aside from that, I've learned that Creed... Number one, I mean, considering it's one of the most favorite, uh, you know, the famous, well-known, I'll say it like that, well-known fragrance houses, even in just the designer uh, fragrance industry, you know, for people that don't really know about scents, you know, colognes and stuff, a lot of people happen to know about the Creed line of fragrances, you know. There was... Something that happened, um, I'm going to say in the early 2000s, that caused a lot of people to look down on Creed uh, as a company and kind of look at an another designer company because while there have been a million companies that have tried to copy Creed Aventus, I mean... Creed's, you know, Silver Mountain Water, uh, you know, all that. People didn't know that um, Creed actually, it's been rumored, I'll say it like that, allegedly, uh, Creed actually copied a, a fragrance from Mont Blanc. So the story goes, Creed had come out with Aventus, Aventus was a ridiculously successful scent. But they were all used to, you know, the, as a house, they were known for coming out with a certain kind of fragrance style. And one day, uh, they were looking to try something different. So they, um, around the same time, it was the early 2000s, uh, when this happened, um, Mont Blanc came out with a, uh, a scent named Individual. Individual was in itself not a spectacular seller at the time. 
but it was a very good fragrance. So much so that it caught Creed's attention. And Creed literally went to work and about two or three years after, you know, Mont Blanc Individual was released. Sorry about that. Hit the camera. Uh, about two, three years after it was released, I'm saying it was in the early 2000s, Creed came out with their own version of Mont Blanc's Individual called, get this, Original Santal. <laughs> Not only did they have the audacity to try and, you know, clone it or make their own version of it, but they even went and had the balls to call it original. So, as part of a tongue-in-cheek, <laughs> as part of a tongue-in-cheek kind of thing, uh, later on, Mom Blanc's like, hey, it's cool. Just remember... What goes around comes around. And they released a fragrance that was almost inexact. Well, I'm not going to say exact, but it was enough to where people could smell it and they'd be like, oh man, that's, that's a lot like Creed. But a lot of people call it a better version of Creed Aventus, and it was a, the first of its kind to be a uh, considered a you know a similar fragrance to Creed Aventus in the designer fragrance market. I'm sure, you know there were a lot of niche houses you know that came out with their own versions. There were millions of clones, but Mont Blanc came out with theirs, called it. Mont Blanc Explorer, and it's more of a citrusy vibe, which is actually what I get off of this. I get a citrusy, like uh, more of a citrusy and pineapple type of fragrance. And um, the the bottle itself, which I'm gonna go ahead and put it like right over here, um, even took the color combination, the black and kind of that clear bottle look. <laughs> From Aventus. Now, Aventus came out years ahead of Individual. Oh, excuse me, Explorer. But Mont Blanc was like, screw you guys, man. If you're going to try and make your own version of ours, we're going to make our own version of yours. And the cool thing about it is that you can pick up Mont Blanc Explorer for a fraction of the price of what you would get Aventus for. So, what goes around comes around, gents. And that's the reason why, if I'm going to get this scent, you know, the scent that this is created off of, which is Aventus, um, instead of getting Aventus, I'm going to get Mont Blanc Explorer. I think that that, was, that took some balls. And, personally, from the way that the scent notes were Describe to me. I like the fact that it's more on the citrusy side instead of uh, the route that Aventus took, which kind of like I've heard it's like a well from what I the version that I smelled, uh, it smelled a bit dark uh, compared, especially to this. Um, I don't know how to explain it. It's like a like a tar kind of uh, mixture with like uh, fruits, not fr not fruits like a citrus florally, but like a pineapple, like I said before. There, there is that common element, but Mont Blanc uh, Explorer is a little bit more on the citrusy side. So, and I, I prefer that. I'm cool with that. Now, usually I am a guy into more like aquatic style fragrances, so you'll see me with Jean Paul Gaultier's Le Mans, or a very close second to that, which by the way, very good and also cheaper. Uh, Prada Luna Rosa Sport. I'll use something like that. And I'll even put, if I want to put something cheap that's gonna, you know, just spray and just throw in the, the bag, 
keep it with me all day. Spray it again if it gets low. I'll use CK1. I don't care. I'll, I'll admit it. Um, I, I, I'm definitely going to go ahead and pick up uh, Mont Blanc Explorer. And I'm going to try and pair it with this when I, when I shave with it again. Speaking of shaving, this carbon razor. Amazing. I have, actually have a uh, little bump here that, you know, the razor combined with this blade, because the Gillette Nasset blades, they just work for me, um, combined with this blade has not even touched. I got a little thing back here, but I know it's because I had something there that it nicked and it just cut clean off. So now it's the reason why I have that nick. But as far as razors go, in my collection, Currently, this carbon, look at that. In my house, the carbon is king. This is the stainless steel version. $250 would be well spent on this razor. But if you know me, and you've watched the video, you'll know I didn't pay $250 for this. Uh, I actually won it from Nate and Mel on BBS Live. They had a special drawing for it. The first guy wasn't there, and when they drew a second time, they called my number, and I told them, yo, I am here, <laughs> and they reached out to, I believe the owner's name is Sean, I apologize if I got that wrong, and he contacted me, confirmed my address, and he sent me one, and they were sold out, but he had one done and sent for me, and I thought that was just, that was really stand up in first class. Uh, from carbon guys i cannot stress enough if you are getting your tax returns and you want to get yourself a good razor this is fantastic this is the 0.68 um base plate it's very similar to the, the game changer um and blade gap th that i have i have the 0.68 but this is a totally different razor the, the way it shaves the head is designed so that it's nice and thin so i can get into those little crevices and edge out my beard. Sorry about that guys, for some reason something happened with my phone and it went uh, belly up. So, you know, back to what I was saying. Um, you know, in short, the uh, Rockwell 6S, which is one that I would be glad to tout as a daily use razor because of just the sheer amount of base plates and versatility that it has. It lacks in the fact that it has a very fat head and base plate. So I can't really get those, you know, um, detailed shots, you know, in my, um, in areas where you have a beard. So for people who really need to get that very uh, precise shave, both Generally, like when you're shaving as well as, you know, around a beard, this is an excellent razor and I recommend it. It's going to be two and a half times more than what the 6S is worth from Rockwell, but it is also made in America and you'll just need one plate and I'm not going to sit here and bullshit you. It is a better razor. Fini. <laughs> so, um, now, the reason why I chose, I'll get to the knife, actually. The reason why I chose the backlash today is because, uh, just like the, uh, the soap and, you know, the, uh, the, the brush, which is actually colors based on uh, gas and mild puff, uh, black, white, and red. Uh, I chose the Backlash because it's one of those knives that it was the first good uh, mainstream uh, mainstream type of knife offering from Civivi. Uh, Civivi is uh, a line that has finally found its way uh, from you know We Knife Company, and I say that because they are basically like the mid-tier knives now 
uh, with their budget line now being Senkut, S-E-N-C-U-T, and their upper tier being We Knife Company. You know, We produces easily two, three, four, five hundred dollar knives, and then for Um, and for uh, shows, for knife shows, they produce custom knives, one-offs, that are only available if you show up to the show. Very small batches because they do, they do their own OEM work. They're not a company that contracts somebody else to make their knives and then, you know, uh, charges a premium for it. They do all of their own stuff. So they have their, they had their, their budget line with Civivi and they came out with a bunch of different knives. By the way, look at that, look at that Tyler. Fantastic. They had their budget line for a while and if it wasn't for knives like the Backlash, uh, they wouldn't have gotten to the point where they are now in which their knives have become associated with quality to the point where they're no longer considered budget. And so they've upped the materials. They've, they've put better materials, steel quality and, you know, uh, handle quality. They're using better micarta, better steel, that sort of thing. And released Senkut, which is now their true budget line and don't get me wrong they did come out with a variant or two of the uh, the backlash with you know Damascus blades slightly better scale handles and I think better uh, steel but it was nowhere near some of the you know uh, other knives that have been released by Civivi, like the Elementum, which is like the darling of Civivi and has so many versions from the budget in D2 to the S35VN, uh, the classier version with jade handles, which I reviewed and I did not like for reasons that were not necessarily because of the knife but just the materials used and the finish. They have Damascus versions. And th they recently came out with a version that has Sandvik steel. It's 14C28N stainless steel. And one of the first in the history of the company to have a button lock. It's a slightly larger knife. And the video will be out soon. If not out already, as of the date of this video being uploaded. So, I highly recommend you check that out because it's a really, really good knife. So, uh, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick little cleanup and get to the post shave. Uh, so, stay tuned. I've said it quite a few times off camera to, you know, my girlfriend, but I'll say it for the first time on camera. I said it already, but I'll say it again. If you haven't tried this carbon, you are missing out. This is easily the best razor in my shave den. And I gotta say, even though it is a uh, an older base, there's a reason why this is still being sold. It's because it's good. It smells good. And uh, totally worth it. Totally, totally worth it. So. is <laughs> the Thayer's Witch Hazel. Right. Man, I tell you. Nothing like a good shave. 
after a long day to kind of give you that hard reset right before bed. That's why I love shaving at night. It's just something special, you know, I can take my time. And speaking of which, shave videos, uh, somebody asked me, hey man, why do, you, why do you do shave videos? And there were a couple of reasons and I just kind of blurted it out and I go, well, first and foremost, because it's my YouTube channel and I can. But secondly, I like to be able to talk about things that are not necessarily knife and EDC related. This YouTube channel is about sharing knowledge and initially, yeah, it was EDC centric. But if I can you know, help somebody out there that's curious about something like this, or even, you know, maybe a, a particular fragrance. I'm gonna double dip on this, because it's good. Oh yeah. This aftershave and skin food from uh, Ariana and Evans. So, so good. This is one that scent really comes out. Love it. So, you know, I, I, I like to help people when I can. I've already had a couple of people ask me, you know, about shaving products, that sort of thing, and even fragrances. And even people that, that are wet shavers that are into fragrances are like, man, I didn't know you were so knowledgeable when it comes to fragrances. And I'm not really, it's just the little that I know, I know because, you know, uh, my dad introduced me to good stuff and <clears throat> kind of took it from there. And I wanted to learn a little bit more about the stuff I was putting on me, you know, uh, uh, got into niche fragrances recently and learned a little bit more about fragrance houses like, you know, uh, like, you said, like I said, House of Creed, uh, Parfums de Marly, that sort of thing. And um, lastly, one of the reasons why I got into wet shaving is, and this is more or less the way that I told uh, my friend, I was like, you know, my knife doesn't need to be the only thing on me that looks sharp. I want to be able to look sharp when I go out and put my best foot forward. I don't like to go around with a dirty knife. I like to clean it. I like to sharpen it. Why should I go out looking grungy, disheveled, and uh, not ready to meet what the day brings? So, you know, shaving well, feeling good, smelling good, looking good, you know, I'm feeling good. And uh, there's nothing wrong with being a penny, just... You know, you can always be a shiny penny. And that's the way I see it. So I'm going to buff out all my uh, attributes and let the best show. And this happens to be one way that I do it. Get a nice haircut, a good shave. You can really change a person. Put a good fragrance on. Maybe a little nick there. No big deal. Really little one. That'll close before I even hit the sack. The one that was back here has closed. Gotta love the alcohol splash for that too. No sting, by the way. Not as strong as most aftershave splashes. Very fragrant. And pretty, pretty long lasting considering it's just an aftershave. But yeah. That's the reason why I'm doing these videos now. I'm going to try to delve into different things, you know, stuff that I got into during the uh, the pandemic. And with that, that is, that is it. We're good to go. So, um, <clears throat> like I said, this is uh, the Ariana and Evans uh, Spartacus Shave. Great base. Uh, they really didn't need Kaizen or Kaizen 2. Uh, Peter, uh, you know, Sneaky Pete. They're great. And I'm going to do other... Uh, shaves with uh, Vetiver Magnifique and Kaizen. Uh, Vetiver Magnifique is in the Kaizen base, but there's a soap named Kaizen. And then um, London Gin Club, which I have in Kaizen too, and I'll be doing that another day. Uh, all great, great quality soaps. But this one, I actually find myself going to more and more because of the just the, the sheer feel of the soap on the body, you know, on the face, getting a good shave. And then just the post-shave feel, oh. It's great stuff. Great close shave with both the soap as well as this razor, the carbon. <sighs> Guys, you've been great. And just remember, um, if you EDC, you know, it could be something like this. Yeevee, it could be uh, one of the new sun cuts. I'd like to see if you have any. Uh, or even uh, something from We Knife Company or another company. Uh, just remember, if you EDC, 
Thank you, DCS. I really appreciate you guys coming by for episode seven of Darn Close Shave and hope to see you next time. Stay tuned for more of my EEC videos and I'll try to keep this going weekly, if not at least reviews of, you know, items like shave soaps, brushes, uh, razors. I really have to do a, a, a long-term review on this because I've had it for a couple months and it's a great razor. But that being said, I gotta go. Gotta clean this up, go to sleep and get ready, ready for tomorrow. So thanks and uh, see you next time. Peace.